In today's video, we're checking out the best solution for respooling your spools. For example, fitting it on an AMS light and your Bamboo Lab A1. Continue watching and we will find the best solution for hopefully any kind of spool. At least that's what I thought this video was gonna be about two days ago when I recorded that first portion of this video. But just a few hours later, this happened and I ended up with filaments all over my Bamboo Lab A1. But I do want to make this extremely clear that this issue had nothing to do with the filament itself or neither of the three different spool holders slash re-spool tools I have been printed. This was all due to my own stupidity and maybe also my screwdriver as well, which we are going to talk about a little bit later in this video. But before we get there, I quickly want to explain what this video was supposed to be about and what what it actually will be about. So I start off with comparing these three either spool holders or re-spool tools and as always I'm also gonna start with the shortest answer possible and that is that all these three do exactly what you think that they will do. Uh, they all worked perfectly with some minor caveats here and there and for my personal preference I will be continue using this Pastamatic tool uh, and I actually went out to buy my own proper screwdriver so I can actually use this tool as it's intended to be used which actually cost me more than I will ever save on these respooling filaments but uh, I think that's a discussion for another video. So first we're gonna jump back to the living room two days ago as I tried to install and assemble all these different designs and then after this we're gonna come back here to the studio where I am gonna share my feedback and also explain that one fatal mistake you should not do when you are using these respooling tools trying to get some filament over from one spool to another. But first we of course need to put everything together. So in these boxes I do have the three models we are gonna try in this video. Uh, just with the sole purpose of being able to use these uh, super super wide spools. So to clarify here we have the external spool holder which has been designed to be right next to an X1C. But uh, this could actually be standing anywhere that you want. It is super wide so it does fit my special spool which is 85 cents centimeters wide you just simply put the roll over here and then you thread it through and then you're done this model however do require four uh, bearings which i believe are called skateboard bearings or 608 bearings uh, you have the links down to the version that i bought uh, i don't know if that's the best one but i know that it works with this specific model and i do have to say that i highly recommend it to invest in a pair of bearings if you are going to be doing any kind of respooling tools or just anything that will be spinning at some point in the future because a lot of the designs on maker world are designed for use doing with these specific bearings uh, and it just uh, keeps everything smoother uh, so everything rolls around the way it should. But since this video is supposed to be about re-spooling spools, we're gonna jump over to the first re-spooling tool. I do however want to mention that I will be using this later in this video because all the other designs that I have been using technically works with wider spools like this one but for some reason this specific company has a very, very much smaller inner diameter so these other designs do not work with this specific tool however if you are using any kind of wider spools that would have a hole or an inner diameter similar to the bamboo labs or larger then these other designs will work but the reason for why i say that it will not work for my specific case has nothing to do with the width of the spool but this very very small inner diameter whereas actually uh, this inner diameter here is actually much larger than bamboo labs but this inner diameter is much smaller i don't know how that works mathematically but that is the case so here we have the cell spool winder which uh, actually in this case is the split base profile to work with the wider spool which ended up not working anyway. Okay so it turns out that uh, I cannot use it on this very very special spool. Instead we are gonna try this uh, perfectly fine uh, spool of Bamboo Lab PLA mat. And I guess we are just gonna start spooling this. See how it goes.
Okay, it rotates. It officially works. Surprisingly easy. Uh, I don't have it secure to anything. I'm, I'm holding it down on my hand right now. But uh, this is, is way better than I expected, to be honest. This version is absolutely perfect. It is a little bit loud and it's also uh, a very much like a DIY feeling. It, it gets the job done, but it's surprisingly fast to, to spool everything. I haven't tried to get super fast actually, but yeah, this is no problem at all. I have absolutely nothing bad to say. This is uh, definitely the easiest to use and I have never had any single problem with this machine. This little uh, worm gear that shifts the filament from left to right. I think that is such an amazing feature and I 100% recommend regardless of which kind of re-spooling tool you're going for, make sure that it has this worm gear as, as this designer is calling it. Uh, so it actually switches the side that the filament ends up on on this spool. So I will give this actually a 9 out of 10 I think and the reason for why it's 9 and not 10 is because the lack of instructions. There will be no detailed assembly instructions I would provide except the two pictures below and a few cross sections from a digital mock-up. There is sufficient information in these images. The designer do provide two different photos, which obviously I was able to, to figure this out. It just took a little bit longer time than I, I felt like it should have done if it would be some proper instructions. As an example, uh, towards the end, when, when everything is done, uh, the, the gear and, and the actual like, mechanics is pretty easy. But in the end, and again, maybe this is just me, but hopefully this will help someone else as well. I'm just gonna screw this out so you see how this works. Two screws, like this and two of these uh, shields, guarding, guarding blocks. You put the screws inside here, and then the screws goes on each side of the spool, and then you screw the screws together through the spool. Okay, and, and this is the spool that should have a filament on already that we just uh, moved over to the other spool right now. Then you have this little thing that uh, I thought was a little bit uh, unclear on the photos. Because what I tried to do, the, what I'm gonna do now is wrong. What I did was that I put this thing inside of the spool and then I tried to put everything on here and then just trying to like balance it. Uh, but what you're supposed to be doing is that you need to hold the spool here and then push it through through the hole here directly and not trying to push it through this way if that makes sense because that was made it very confusing for me so you should not put it in here and try to push it down instead you should put it down here and then insert this thing through that hole here so this actually can never go up through that hole if that makes sense but yeah i just wish it could have been a little bit better uh instructions on how to install this. For example, if we are moving over to the pasta, ma pasta, pasta, matic, pasta ma maniac, pasta matic that comes with a very, very nice instruction video, which was super, super helpful. However, instead, I had to reprint this not only once, not only twice but three times because these gears and very, very tall prints uh, just kept uh, printing in the air or like being like spaghetti monsters in, in my printer. And this was with the X1C. So I can understand if maybe the bed slinger in the A1 uh, would have some issues. But after my two failed prints on the X1C, I tried with my cool plate on the A1 and it worked right away, uh, which was super confusing. How is this possible that it prints perfectly on a Bamboo Lab A1 the first try? with the exact same plate I used on my X1C. That is crazy. But then after that, there was still one of these little screw designs that uh, was just did not print at all. So uh, yeah, a very frustrating printing experience. But after that, everything went very, very smooth. 
should however note that for this kind of print you need two things first of all i think you need like 14 uh, bearings so uh, make sure to get a lot of bearings again you have my my link in the description uh, which is an affiliate link to amazon but you do also need a proper screwdriver and by proper i mean someone that has like variable speeds so if you do hold it in a little bit then it will go very slow and then if you do is apply a little bit more pressure it will speed up. I only have a very, very cheap uh, Xiaomi electric USB one that only has one mode, which is like insanely fast, like way too fast for this machine. Uh, so I did ran into so many issues just because I didn't have the proper screwdriver. Okay, turns out that this specific solution did not work as expected. Please do uh, show your support and like this video because uh, I go through a lot of work to make these videos. Uh, I have to say, I kind of regret this decision, but there's no going back right now. Again, I should say that uh, I tried with using this very random spool on this machine, which uh, wide wise would work but again this hole is too tiny but i did use this external spool holder and it kind of worked uh, i should have had something else just holding down this spool and it would have worked a lot better uh, it got everything off this spool perfectly and onto my bamboo lab spool but and here comes the one mistake that i did that made this entire spool fall over on all, all over on my printer and made me so frustrated so i just threw it out right away and just forgot about that spool as soon as i possibly could so my mistake was and i don't exactly know how or why this happened but i think that as i was using the screwdriver on the bamboo lab spool i accidentally unlocked it and it fell off so for me, what I did, I was just holding the, the spool with the filament on already. And as I was going to put it on my uh, AMS light to see if it worked, I guess I was just holding on, on one side. So I was holding it like this and uh, the other side and all the filament just fell off and just ended up being a huge mess in my studio. Uh, and I don't know exactly why this got twisted off either. It was because the, the torque of the actual screwdriver had screwed this up and then because it has this like lock position. So you, you do have to like unlock it in order to remove it because this now it doesn't move at all. Um, so either that or maybe it was just like the, the filament came on an awkward position. So it kept like pressing out on the spool. Not entirely sure, but for now, I have to give this an eight out of 10 because I do enjoy the other uh, cell spool winder more because it has never failed me. And it is a little bit manual and the actual spool quality is not as good. Again, I highly recommend using the, the screwdriver version and the Pastamatic one to get just better quality on the spools. Moving forward, especially now when I do have the screwdriver, I am gonna be using the, the Pastamatic and see if that works. And I will make sure to update everyone either in a future video or just a YouTube post as well. As long as you do have a proper screwdriver with variable speed, so it doesn't just go from like zero to 100 right away, Way. do invest in a few bearings uh, because this just makes the entire process so much easier and the final spool much better than the other one as well so hopefully you did learn something new in this video i know that i learned a lot making this video although it took way longer than i thought and i wasted so much more pla and, and filament than i uh, thought i would so i would really appreciate it if you do take some time to subscribe to this channel if i did save you some time maybe some money as well uh, figuring out which version and which solution that you should go for and hopefully you also learned something new in this video as well for example that uh, bearings swedish we call this kul lager which is uh, pretty useless information to know i guess but something that is not useless that is to subscribe to this channel and to hit that bell so you do get notified next time i make a video similar to this one or try something else 3d related here in my very crowded uh, youtube studio
Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Lucas. It starts with Alice and like, ends with S, and subscribe. Please do both, and see you all in the next one. How oh, do we do this? How do we do, do we do the things that we do? How do we do put together this little thing?